Hey guys, this is Dan the GM, and this is a very special episode of What the Dice. This episode is an introduction of a new character. Our player, Pixie, is a friend of mine and of Nightland's. So, Pixie, tell us a little about yourself. Well, my name is Pixie, and I really rather enjoy role playing. I've been doing it for, I'm going to say going on 20 years now, uh, but this is actually somehow my first Pathfinder campaign. So probably going to need some hand holding, but I'm really excited to start. That's good. So we are going to just jump right in um, because we've got to not only get your intro done and then get you somehow with the rest of the party. So Lord knows how that's going to work. Excited to find out. So, it is near dusk in the Undercity of the Holy City. Though the torches have been lit all day because no sunlight, you know the sounds of the ocean calming down. And you know the sound of the changing of the guards. This also tells you that it is time for your character to close up the... the uh, the library that she works at. As the camera pans into the library and looks behind the desk by the dusty tomes, what do we see? So you would see a, um, a prim and proper librarian with her hair in a bun and she is wearing glasses. She's working to okay. file uh, returns and late slips and sorting books onto carts to be put away. Are you escorting any of the stragglers out, or do you just kind of let them make their way out eventually? I let them make their way out and um, answer any questions or point them in directions, tell them who's going to be in tomorrow, that kind of thing. So the last patron exits, giving you the ability to shut and lock the door and finish up your night. I need a perception check. Ugh, first roll is not good. Eleven. You don't notice it, but you can almost have this sense of there is someone or something behind you. What would you like to do? Well, I rolled kind of low, so I must be distracted. Um... Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to continue on with what I'm doing with a slight sense of, um, oh man, I can't find my English today, a, a sense of heightened awareness, or try to anyway. As you turn around, there is a tall, slender built person with a cowl over them. The hood is drawn so you cannot see their face. And they give you a very soft bow. I'm sorry, I was straggling behind. Uh, do you mind if you let me out? I can do that. Those stacks are a little bit labyrinths back there. This way, please. As she passes by to exit, she places a hand on your shoulder and gives you another bow. Thank you. You've been ever so kind. As she disappears into the dark corridors of the Undercity, I need another perception check. All right, I'm a little more aware. 16. As you place the key back in your pocket after locking the door, you feel a piece of paper. Not standard parchment paper, but more of the tried and true cloth paper that maps are usually made from. Ooh, vellum. Yes. I suppose I will find somewhere um, shielded from prying eyes and take a look at what's in my pocket. You find a small folded up piece of vellum. Unfolding it, you recognize some of the landmarkers as shops and pubs 
that litter the Undercity. There's just a single X in a strange area where no one ever goes because it's empty. It's part of the wall system. You also have never seen this map before. The handwriting on it is elegant, but strangely archaic in the way the letters are drawn out. They're a little bit more calligraphy that has been forgotten to the times, but it is in a common tongue. Should I take this to be a meeting place? Is there a time listed? There's no time listed. Let's do a knowledge local. 21. With the 21, you study the map a little longer, and then you start to realize that this X is part of the wall. It would be as if someone is hiding something there. It would probably be something like an information dead drop. It's a place where guards go very rarely and the mass public almost never go. Hmm. Sounds like it's time to slip into my second job's uniform. <laughs> and what does your second job's uniform look like? Leathers. Think traditional rogue leathers. No cloak. Um, she does wear a mask over the lower half of her face. Okay. And dark gray, not black or brown. Uh, dark gray tends to blend in better than black does, believe it or not. Yeah. So how long are you going to wait before you go poking around wherever this X is located? At least until most people are in bed. Okay. You wait a few hours, letting the sounds of the Undercity that you've grown so accustomed to slowly fade. You see the nightly guards making their shift changes, telling you it's approximately midnight. Making your way through the city, it's pretty easy to stay to the shadows, as most of the torches are either put out so that people can rest, or they are switched over to smaller torches, more like lanterns, that give off a little less light. Finding your way to this strange section of wall, you don't see anything out of the normal. I need a perception check. Dirty 20. With the dirty 20, you begin to run your fingers across the stone. It's wet with condensation, but then you find something that feels a little off. It feels as if it is, at first you think maybe a padlock, and then you feel it and it's not quite a padlock. It feels as if it is more of a, a hinged handle. Upon a closer inspection, you notice that it is locked. Kind of like a, what we would view as a modern day slide bolt. What would you like to do? Pick the lock. All right, give me a disabled device. 20. 20 or 20 plus? 24. Okay. After a couple seconds of fiddling with the lock, you're able to pop it. You slowly slide the bolt out of place and open what feels like a metal door that has been expertly carved and painted to look like the stone. Once you slip inside the door, you shut it behind you leaving it just open enough so you can get out if you need to. It looks like you're in some kind of access hallway. It is wet, as if water's always draining down here. Maybe this is a converted drain pipe from the Holy City. Is it lit? You can hear... Barely. It almost feels as if the stone itself is giving off just the faintest of light. Do you have any type of torch or anything that you want to use? I think I'll hold still for a minute and let my eyes adjust and then uh, proceed carefully. Um, I wouldn't want to risk shedding light and giving away the fact that I'm there. Okay. 
You wait a few moments in the complete darkness. You can hear the dripping of water and almost the sound of something chittering moving around in the darkness. It's not uncommon for diorats to make their home in forgotten tunnels, especially in the Undercity. Diorat has become almost like a cheap, inexpensive meal for the poor here. It's not that the Holy City doesn't provide, it's just sometimes you can't afford a good meal. Once your eyes dilate a little bit further, you're able to see the walls have been smoothed out. And it is definitely some kind of access tunnel. What would you like to do? Make sure my books and I guess the options are left or right? Uh, back or forward. Leave or continue on. Let's go. As you continue on deeper into the tunnels, the sound of a chittering is getting slightly louder. You run your fingers across some of the stone to keep your balance and also to feel for any type of trap mechanisms. And the stone stops feeling like traditional cut stone and it starts to feel smoother. As if it was sanded down stone to make a finished look. The steps that you're walking start to become easier as if you were walking on wider stairs. You also start to notice that built into the walls are lanterns that are just barely lit, giving the room an eerie feel. Perception check. All right, that eeriness got to me. Let's go with an 11. Wait, 13. Math. With the 13, you see it. A dire rat. It is chewing on something that looks like maybe a bone, a scrap of leather, something like that. It hasn't gotten your attention yet, or it you haven't gotten its attention yet. And it is continuing to chew away. What would you like to do? Is there space to go around it? Yes, but you might catch its attention. Okay, I'm still going to try and get around it anyway, um, and generally kind of keep myself facing it so that it can't, um, backbite me. Yeah. Roll your stealth. 17. I goes to you. Its head pops up and its ears seem to twitch. As you see that movement, you freeze. It sniffs the air for a moment before returning to its bone. Go and stay frozen for a minute and then move on. Alright. I need another to stealth check then. Fifteen. As you walk, you step on something that is like a loose stone. And it makes a sudden scraping sound. Oh no. The rat turns and stares at you chittering angrily. I need a initiative roll. 18. Alright. Okay. I'm going first. The rat is just inside melee range. He is going to try to bite at you. Does a 4 hit you? If my AC is 22, no. No. So the rat tries to bite at you and misses completely. What would you like to do? It is your round. All right, how big are dire rats? Can I kick it? Uh, they are considered small animals. They are about the size of a small dog. So think like Chihuahua, maybe a large cat. I'm going to attempt to kick it so I can get some space to draw my blade. You've got space to draw your blade that and it missed, so. Okay, I'm still gonna kick it because maybe it'll run off. Okay. Then I need a melee. And you'll be using your unarmed attack. So it's my roll plus total attack bonus, right? Yes. That makes it a 18. 
That is a hit. Roll your damage, which is 1d3 plus 3. Five. As you kick it, you hear the sound of bones snapping, and it just slumps over dead. Close enough. Yeah. After the battle, you sit and let your ears adjust to the sounds around you. It sounds like further up ahead, you can almost hear the sounds of murmuring, as if someone is talking behind a door. Would you like to continue down the tunnel? Yes, and I'm going to draw my blade now so that it doesn't make any noise later, even though I've uh, guarded against that. As you continue up, the steps become smoother and easier to truck up. You also feel what feels like a handguard or a hand railing on each on the side. Can I get a perception check? Nineteen. Your eyes have become more adjusted to the low level of light, and you're noticing that the walls are painted a stock and sterile white. And in large print painted on the walls, you see emergency exit 157. You also notice that there are runes glowing. Do you have any type of knowledge arcana or anything like that? It looks like just knowledge local. Go ahead and roll knowledge local because you may have seen these uh, in books that you've read. 13? Where most of these you have absolutely no clue what they are. There are a few that you recognize and they come from like the school of illusion and the school of protection and several other realms of magic that shouldn't mix well but it seems as if someone has gone to great lengths to scry them into the stone and create almost it's one of those things of if you don't know it's there you'd never find it you're starting to get this feeling as if what you have stumbled across you should have probably never been able to find. As you continue up further the stairs, you reach a large door. You can hear murmuring on the other side. And you can see light seeping out from underneath it. You hear what sounds like complaints, followed by the sound of something that sounds like a wet slap. You hear some chuckling, and then you hear another argument break out. What would you like to do? Listen at the door. If there's a crack or a peephole or anything, I think I'll look through it. You don't find any peepholes or anything like that, but you do notice that at the base, there's light pouring out. Kneeling down, you can press your ear against that crack, and you can hear muffled conversation. You hear words that, things of like, agent, and the toy makers, the hell spawn, swamp creatures, mimics, you also hear the term institute and you also hear the word priestess and paladins it sounds like there's conversations from different people after a moment or two you notice that the light starts to dim a little bit and almost gets a blue hue the conversations seem to fade away and then silence Has the light gone out? No, the light switched to like a blue hue. Like it's almost like if you were standing outside in the moon in a moonlit night, that kind of perfect blue. Oh, the best. Do I sense anybody in the room still? You don't hear anything. It's eerily quiet. Can I sense what time of night it is? Hmm. Roll your intelligence. Twelve. You guess that you've been walking for about a half hour based on your foot speed and going uphill um, and that you remember that you were, you left about midnight. How long was I eavesdropping? A couple of minutes, so it's probably been altogether 35, 40 minutes. It's probably about 1 a.m. Yeah, close. 
Hmm. Alright, let's try to open the door. You gently pull on the door. Give me a sleight of hand. Ooh, that's a new one. 19. No, wait, that's 17. Sorry. You carefully pull on the door, making sure that if it's locked, you don't pull hard enough for it to rattle. And just hard enough to let you know if it's locked. The door isn't definitely locked. You begin to run your fingers across the lock and you notice that it's another strange lock like the one you encountered below. Give me a disable device. 17. With ease, you're able to pop the lock. Cracking the door open just slightly, you peer in and you see a massive library. What would you like to do? Take just a minute to swoon internally. I have a thing for libraries. So does Faye. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to kind of look around just a little bit, listen to see if anybody's coming, and um, leave the door slightly ajar. And I guess, is there like a... a... I'm going to look for where I heard the conversation coming from. Like if they were sitting around a table or something, I want to see if there are any signs of like, you know, a meal or drinks or anything like that. All right. Perception. 22. Peering in, you see that there was a table, small table with several books stacked upon it, but it looks like they have all been closed. The desks or the chairs have all been pushed in and everything seems to be in a neat, orderly fashion. As you peer around, you notice that there are some guards that are walking around up top and one or two that pass through. Their armor is very different than what you're used to seeing. These armors are long black trench coats that look like they have been padded with some kind of leather. In their hands, they carry strange firearms. You've seen some firearms from the short round family that look nothing like this. These don't have any type of musket build and they're also solid black. The guards pass by the door and don't seem to notice you as they continue on. Waiting a moment longer, the room is clear and it looks like you'd be able to sneak in now. I'm not as good as I am for nothing. I'm going to wait. If uh, the guards make regular rounds, I'm going to time it. Roll a... Hmm. Let's go with the perception. 17. I am good. You wait, and you notice that they have regular intervals of about 15 minutes. This seems unusual. This kind of patrol almost indicates that this is high security. You know a couple people who have dealt with something like this, and a lot of these high security facilities tend to make people disappear. The one thing you do notice as you wait is some of the titles of the books in front of you. On the bookshelf in front of you, there are books from writers that only had one or two books to their name that were scholars. And in front of you, you see first editions. You also see handwritten bindings of strange information. Things of where black powder came from, how it was discovered, and other strange, something you wouldn't see in a normal library. You know, I was about to say, what are the titles of the books on the table where they were sitting? Perception check. 16. As you look and you stare, letting your eyes just kind of get that little bit of focus, you start to notice that some of the books are the anatomy and physiology of elementals, the anatomy of tieflings. You see a couple books that talk about the origins of different gods. And then you notice one that stands out. And it's just The Secrets of the Secret Keeper. Uh -huh. It is a book you would recognize as, or at least in the binding. The binding is of black leather and the script is in this faded gray. You would recognize it as a book that someone that worships Nordor Nordorberg? Is that how it's pronounced? Norgorber? I've been going with... Uh, Norgorber, yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been going with Norgorber. The god of the thievery and assassination. Right, that's relevant. But this book seems a little different. 
the font almost seems to glow. What would you like to do? Between uh, patrols, I'm going to slip over and take a look at it. I want to see how it differs from the one I'm familiar with. I'm going to need a sleight of hand for you to get it out without disturbing any of the other books. That's a nat 20. So you were able to slip it out without even the dust moving around. Opening the book up, you notice that the book originally, when you first opened it, was completely blank. Flipping through the pages, you start to notice that the words start to slowly appear and they're written in thieves' cant. It is the most common written language every rogue is trained in. Some of the words start to fade and then you are left with two words, forgotten and gods, as you hear the sound of a cane tapping on the ground behind you. Oh, there's no way I messed up the patrol cycle. What would you like to do? I'm going to uh, slip the book somewhere on my person. Okay, I'm going to need a sleight of hand. 16. You were able to slip it kind of on your pack, between your, you and your pack, where it's not easily seen. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to compliment the person for sneaking up on me. What do you say? It's been a long time since somebody snuck up on me. Ah, well, yeah. Well, when you were in my library, you must know I know everything. It's, I have eyes where I shouldn't be. Now, who are you and how did you get into my library? How did you sneak up on me? I've been standing here the whole time. I just was behind the bookshelf. You're short, aren't you? Keep in mind I haven't turned around yet. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, I'm about the average size of a rattling. Bit old, so I might have a little hunch to me. That might make me a bit shorter. Now, he pokes you with the cane. Who are you, and how did you get into my library? Who's the woman who gave me the map? Wait, are you asking if this is the woman that gave you the map? No, I'm asking who is the woman who gave me the map? You don't know. I'm asking him. He goes, woman? There's no map to that. that, that there's no map to get here. This place shouldn't exist on any map. Now, turn around. I'll get the guards to deal with you. All right, I'll turn around. As you turn around, you see the lead scholar of the Holy City, a rat scholar who is probably one of the oldest rats in the, in the Holy City. He looks you up and down, pokes you again with the end of his cane. Now, where did you come from? You smell of Undercity, which isn't necessarily a bad smell, but you shouldn't be here. Through the door. Now, how did you get in? He looks over and goes, hmm, I thought I had that locked. How did you know about the door? Come on, that's up. Well, you did have it locked. Hmm. All right, so I need a better lock. It still does not tell me how you found it. With my hands. Kind of dark in there. Well, it's supposed to be dark in there. It's only used for emergencies, and it's supposed to be exits only. Now, how did you find that entrance exit? With my hands. I felt it. Very well disguised, but um, sensitive fingers. I need you to roll a bluff. Apparently Faye is laughing too hard, too. <laughs> Eleven. He just raises an eyebrow and he's like, So you just went haphazardly poking around in the Undercity and found the first door. Decided to pick that lock and then came walking up a very treacherous path to my nicer area and then picked a second lock. Just because. Nice night for a stroll, yeah. I need a reflex check. Okay, so the reflex is that first box, right? Yep. Whatever you roll, plus that. Okay, so there's a 10 in that box. Okay, that makes it a 27. <laughs> yeah. So you skillfully duck as he swings his cane down. He cocks his head to the side. He goes, well... Now, if you tell me how you got here, I might have something for you. Patron at work slipped me a map. May I see the map? You know how to handle vellum, right? 
Absolutely. I am one of the best scholars in the holy city. In fact, most of my personal books are made from it. All right, I hand it over. As you pull out the map, it ashes in your hand. It just blows away in an invisible breeze. I'm a rogue, not a sorcerer. That was magic. Hmm. The rat scholar stares at you for a long moment. Hmm. Yes. Well. Hmm. Come with me. As he walks off, the sound of his cane clicking on the marble echoes. The lights start to slowly turn up, and you notice that there are other guards and other scholars that seem to have been watching and not moving. The rat scholar walks up a small staircase into what looks like a private room that is surrounded by glass so that he can see everything that's going on. Do you want to follow him? Yes, with zero shame. As you get up to that office, he shuts the door and offers you a chair. Well, miss, uh, what is your name? Hushful, Faye Hushful. Well, Miss Faye, what you have stumbled across is a very special place. This is known as the Institute of Extraplanar Studies. We, well, we, I have designed this special library to acquire magical items from both this plane and the exoplanes in a way to find a way to protect us from unknown magics, such as the darkness that has been creeping in from the unknown, as well as a forgotten god that we have come to know as the Bone God. And apparently, he has a counterpart known as the Bone Goddess. I have some very highly trained agents that don't have the skills required to do everything. Yes, yes, the paladin can swing a mace better than any, well, sword or shield. I forget what he uses. There's a young gnome that has the loudest of weapons I have ever heard. And a strange black cat that has a spider familiar that has a keen eye with a bow. But sneaking and locking, picking locks and all the, the, the underhandedness they lack. Yes, yes. Kalila has been learning and has been studying here and there, but they need someone highly skilled. Now, the priestess doesn't know of this and neither do the paladins. Only a select few know of this place. I do give the priestess updates on dealing with the plague and also giving her information of the bone god that we know of, but I feel as if you would be a good match with the others. And I am not saying this is not without peril. Yes, you are. You will be trying to deal with a god, and sometimes gods get a little smitey when you oppose them. So, what do you say, miss? What's the time frame? On when the job will com be complete? Well, I guess that's when either the bone god disappears forever, or you die. And either way, this is a lifelong mission, but I can also guarantee you access to the Institute with all its books, all its knowledge, and all its research. I've seen... I have seen many come and go. I have trained many scholars in my time. A thirst for knowledge and a quick hand is all you need to obtain what you want. I am offering you a position in the Institute as an agent as part of the Alpha team. I'm not usually a team player, and the benefits better be good. Well, they do get paid directly from the Holy City. We tend to pick up any tabs and we deal with any of the, oh, what do you adventurers call it? When you blow something- Collateral damage? Yes, that's it, collateral damage. And these three have done quite a bit. Let's see, they've destroyed Let's see, they blew up a, a guardhouse, they burned down a quarter of a tavern, and it doesn't really come out of their pocket, as well as we make sure they are paid. They are also given a home in the city. 
I'm sure you've heard of them. The, uh, the heroes of the Holy City is what most call them. You're kind of not selling the job very well. I don't leave behind collateral damage, and I have my own home, but the pay sounds attractive. But you will also be able to travel all over the known world. In fact, right now, the agents are heading towards a small xenophobic area known as Godsfell. I've been able to acquire access to them to deal with a small matter there. You and them would be the first non-dwarves to enter into their halls in as long as they've been around. And on top of their normal pay, if you bring me of any information, books, maps, scrolls, and even items, I will pay extra, as I do with them. I'm still taking side jobs. If you want. Good. Now, that means you will have to get to the Murdoch before them. They have about a day or so's travel ahead of you, so. All right. How about we find you a teleportation scroll and get you at least into the town? And from there, you can do whatever you need to do, minus murder, to get onto the Murdoch. I thought my expenses were paid. Yes, but tickets on the Murdoch are very rare. And I was able to acquire three, not knowing a fourth would be joining. But it seems as if things align in a very odd way, seeing I had just acquired a strange book from one of my agents. They are called the choirs. They tend to find books of religious texts. Lately, a strange book had come across my desk. One written completely in thieves' cant, a language I don't inherently speak. But the thing I did notice is that the pages reveal themselves to those who that god seems worthy. I've been had, haven't I? Yes. You see, every now and then, we find items that tell us a little bit about what's going on. I came across such an orb, told me of a strange shadow that would appear in my hallway, and that all I need is the right book, and that the book would come into my possession within the next week. In the last week, I had been receiving many books, so I stacked them all on one table, and I waited. I've been had, haven't I? Well, gods do like pulling strings, and they do it quite well. But as an added bonus, if you have any fees or warrants out for your address, your arrest, I will clear them so that you have no problems traveling. No, I'm clean. I've been clean for years. Now that is good. So, you will join the team? I'll join your team. Excellent, excellent. Now, let's find you a teleportation scroll or teleportation window. Can I go home and pack? Absolutely. So am I going back out the wall or are you gonna show me the front door? No, let me show you the way out. He begins to give you the 10 cent tour as you exit. As you travel through, you see all sorts of races working together. You see drow working with high elves. You even see a few orcs that are testing different types of armor. But you also notice strange creatures you see gelatin cubes that are corpor- incorporeal. You see swords that seem to shrink their cages down before trying to expand them out and, and free themselves. You see masks that seem to hypnotize people that are in the cages with them. All the while, scholars and others taking notes as security makes sure no one gets harmed. Picking you up a hidden set of staircase up to the Holy City Scholarly Library. He walks you out and you are in the heart of the Holy City. Behind you, the main temple. To the west, the Paladin Order. To the south, the exit that heads towards the sea. Reaching into his bag, he hands you a small ring. This will get you in and out of the the, uh, Institute without any questions. It can fit beneath your glove and no one will notice it. But we all know who wears it. There's a uh, psychic link to all of them. That doesn't tell us who you are. It just tells you that you are among trusted. I pocket the ring. He nods. He goes, now. 
Let me know when you are ready to go. I will find you a way to the port town. Let me take my leave from work and pack, and I will be back this afternoon. He gives you a nod, and he goes, Be lucky. You dodged my cane. Not many do that, you know. Not many sneak up on me. Well done, sir. I thank you. I'm still quite spry for my age. He gives you a bow as he exits back into the library. And you head back home? Yes. Okay. I think by now I'm probably pretty hungry, so I'm going to eat and tidy up my home, put it in order for an extended uh, trip away. How long does it take you to pack your gear? Probably a few hours. I also need to go to my workplace and take a leave of absence. Something has come up. I'm... They know I'm an orphan, so I can't use a family excuse, but I'll find something. Okay. When you arrive at your home, I need a perception check. 16. You see a scroll sitting on your table, wherever you would normally put it. Do I recognize it? The seal is black, and it looks like it has a rose symbol on it. Are you wanting to open it or anything? I'm going to eat first. It's a bad idea to open unknown scrolls on an empty stomach. (laughs) So you have yourself a quick meal. Quick meal, quick preliminary pack. Um, it, it's a bad idea to open unknown scrolls without being ready. So she's pretty much going to open it right before she goes to work. As you break the seal, the air around you gets chilled. Unrolling it further, there's just some simple writing in that strange calligraphy you saw on the map. The words are simple and you don't really know what to take of it. It is just two simple words. Thank you. You're welcome. So you're literally just going to say you're welcome to the air? Yeah, knee-jerk reflex. You're welcome. Okay. And then um, probably going to carefully put it away. Um, I'm the kind of person who would have attempted to keep the seal intact, even though it had to be broken off the page. All right, then I will need a... Let's do a uh, sleight of hand. Yeah, that seems the best one. 14. Looks like I saved part of it, at least. You saved about half of it. Enough to see that it was a rose. So, you've got half a rose stamp. Enough for me to remember, and I'll probably write it down in my uh, book of secrets. Speaking of, that's that's always going to be part of putting her house in order or the end of her day is writing in her book of secrets. Okay. I might need you to remind me, remind me that every now and then, just so I have it. Um, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. When you get back to work, the owner of the library walks up and shakes your hand and literally starts to congratulate you. And it's this exuberant, oh, I'm so happy for you. I can't believe it finally happened. Blah, blah, blah. That That kind of like thing. Yeah, me either. I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Bluff check. I am on my game despite having no coffee. (laughs) That's a 19 plus bluff. That's a 6. Yeah, math says that's what, like a 25? (laughs) Something like that. Um, So you're able to bluff your way through it, and he goes, I can't believe the holy... the, the, The scholar's library is accepting you. I I didn't even know you applied. Didn't want to disappoint anybody if I didn't make it. They shake your hand. They're like, well, you know, if you need anything from us, you know, you can just come on down here and ask. You you know, you're always going to be part of this family here in this library. And you've always worked so well. I'm glad you got picked for what job do you do get? Procurement agent. A what? Procurement agent. Uh, Looks like I'm going to be doing some traveling. Well, I know that you've always wanted to get out of the Holy City, and it's the best time to do it. Looking forward to it. Sure, I'm going to miss you guys, though. Um, kind of like how small and quiet it is. Well, you're always welcome to come back. I'm sure I will visit at least. The owner gives you another good hearty shake and goes about their work. It seems as if the Rat Scholar had traced you down and took care of your job for you. I've been had. (laughs) 
All right, I guess I'm gonna clean out my desk. <laughs> All right, you clean out your desk. I have cleaned out my desk. Now what? <laughs> I guess I'll take it all back home. <laughs> so after dealing with that, cleaning up your house, back to the rat scholar, correct? Or is there anything else you want to take care of in the Undercity? Maybe a nap. Um, I'm probably going to dispose of any fresh food or anything like that, among other things. Um, I can't really see hitting the shops for very much. Let the neighbor know to keep an eye on on my place. And uh, probably a nap and then off to the rat scholar, yeah. Following your trake back, you're able to get into the scholar's library without a problem. In fact, it looks as if you are actually transferred to there so that you are classified as a official worker. Following the path down, you make your way into the institute. Several of these armed men, women, whatever, Salute and or bow to you as you pass. A few of the other scholars give you a nod, acknowledging you. You arrive to the rat scholar, who is tossing books at a, another scholar who clearly has done something wrong. You're not sure what, because they are yelling. He is yelling at him in rat folk, rattling. Rattling? I think that's the language is rattling. Run with it. Yeah. Um, after a while, he stops and notices you. He's like, ah, oh, well, hmm. a few hours. Guess you had to just deal with everything. Guess so. And you did have a life before now. Now you work for me, and technically you work for the Institute. But that doesn't matter. Now, I've gotten a scroll. It's a one-way teleportation scroll that will get you to the Dock City. In fact, I was able to get it to where you land in the area where the Murdoch will be docked. It's your job to sneak aboard it. Are you up to that? Got in here, didn't I? Is this true? Now, he hands you a scroll with the Institute seal, and he goes, you will hand this to Clyde DeFibulous or Clyde, any of them, and that will verify that you work for us. They're quite an interesting lot at times, so enjoy that. The, the tin can can be a little annoying. The Fibulous is, he's got a strange air to him, and Kalila. Kalila's not a bad one. She's, she's quite smart for a cat that comes from a little fishing village. I don't know much about the spider. He's grown quite a bit since I last saw him. So, are you ready to be off on your new adventure as an agent? As ready as I can be. All right. Handing the scroll, he takes a good step back and lets you... You don't have used magic device, do you? Ha ha ha. Uh, GM Fiat? Uh, you can't use magical devices. Well, I mean, some of them are made so you can use them without screwing up. Yep. Yeah. We say that's what this one is. In a flash of light, <laughs> you land on a very busy... Zeppelin dock. There are two Zeppelins that are clearly for merchants. They are more industrial in design. And then you see one that is almost like a flying casino. You can hear in the distance a human voice arguing with what sounds like a gnome and maybe an elf about checking his luggage and how they have precious items in their stead that they can't let out of their and sight. I understand that, but I guess I will have to um, get approval because it has potions in here, it has rings in here that cannot be... Perception check. 14. Looking around for some kind of identification marker or what Zeppelin is what, you finally notice after a minute or two, in big shining letters across the top of the Zeppelin, the Murdoch. A luxury Zeppelin. Schmancy. I now need a stealth check to get close. 14? I really should have had a longer nap. It takes you a little bit to get used to ducking and dodging in the bright open day, but then you start to notice that there are a lot of clockwork robots that are doing the loading. 
loading, you know, food stuff, supplies, things like that. And then you notice the cabins. I need a another a, uh, another stealth check to get close. This thing's a flying casino, right? What if I just bluff my way on board as a sudden dealer swap out? Uh, all the staff are clockwork. Okay, sneaky sneaky it is. Mm -hmm. I really should have had a longer nap. That's a 12. Let me see if any of the clockwork see you. None of them see you. I rolled low on everything. And then you do see a large window that leads into one of the estate rooms. Looks like it can be opened from the outside. Or you can try to go in through the supply lift. To get in through the window would require you to climb. The supply lift would just require you to sneak. Well, I have a bag with me, so let's go in through the supply lift. Give me a stealthy stealth roll. 17! I'm awake! Yeah. You're able to sneak on board. The Murdoch is quiet as the band's not playing and no one's walking on board. You do notice that the clockwork robots seem to not even register that you're there once you're on board. Unless you speak to them, it seems like. You make your way across and you find a room that is labeled Heroes of the Holy City and the door is locked. Can I tell if anybody's in the room yet? Uh, perception check. 16. Placing your ear to the door, you hear nothing. Pick the lock. Alright, disable device. 18. You were able to slip in. Looking around, you see that it is a massive estate room with two bedrooms and a common room. You also see there's the traditional, like, basket of fruit and casino chips kind of the, you know, um, someone who spent a lot of money to get a fancy hotel room and a casino get the, you know, here's a handful of chips and some fruit welcoming. High roller. Yeah, the high roller suites. Score. All right, I'm, uh, I'm going to look around and I'm going to pocket a couple of the chips. I'm going to pick up a piece of fruit and I'm going to pick out the best bed. All right. As you pick up a handful of chips and pick up the nicest, freshest looking fruit you have ever seen and pick out the most comfortable bed you have ever felt in your life, we're going to end this episode here. And I want to officially welcome Pixie into the What the Dice cast. All right, guys, that's all we got for this week's episode. And seeing I didn't say what episode this was, this was episode 71 of What the Dice. Don't forget, you guys can follow us on Twitter at What the Dice Pod. We'll see you in the next episode. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email What the Dice Pod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email What the Dice Pod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us.